Welcome now to Cheese Aquarium, everybody. Today I have an update on the 1600 gallon system. I want to apologize. I have not been getting updates out the way that I would like to. I've been extremely busy just with work and family and doing some research on some things on the side, and I just have not had the time to dedicate to making quality videos. But this week, I wanted to talk about what's going on in the 1600 gallon system. The tanks are doing pretty good. There's been a couple of ups and downs, minor things. I'm not too concerned about them, and I think I got a good handle on them. Let's start off by talking about the 720 gallon aquarium. The 720 gallon has been doing phenomenal. I've only had one minor hiccup. One of the four purple pseudochromas has disappeared. I have not seen this fish for a few weeks and I'm not sure exactly what happened. I never found it and unless it's hiding in the rocks, which it's possible, it might still be in the tank, but I don't really think that it is. I've added one coral to this tank, just one small piece of a green naphthia. See how that does in addition to the cold corals and the piece of Blue Ridge that's in there. I really want to start putting a few more select corals in there that don't need a ton of light and will enjoy a, a moderate to very heavy water flow as I have now increased the water flow in the 720 gallon tank. I had originally two of the Rossmont waiver pumps, the MX 4100s, which gave me 8200 gallons per hour of flow in the tank in addition to another 2000 or so gallons per hour coming from the return. So I had over 10,000 gallons of water flow in that tank to start. I have now increased it by adding a third Rossmont mover pump. So now I am over 14,300 gallons per hour of water flow in the 720 gallon tank when all the pumps are on full. Two of those Rossmonts are on a waiver controller which I've been kind of playing around with the Android app that they have for it. It's been kind of interesting. I've been hoping to do a video on that app and a little bit more on the waivers to kind of give an update since I've had them for several months now and kind of give first impressions. And so far I'm pretty happy with these pumps. They're low maintenance and run pretty good in the tank. Haven't had any major issues with them to speak of. The fish of course in the 720 other than the head purple pseudochromis are doing great. The puffers have been doing phenomenal and all the fish have been getting along really good. Feeding time of course is still one of my favorite times of the day with the puffers and I can happily report that the puffers have not gone after each other. I've been getting a pretty good routine down with feeding. I use a couple pairs of tongs and keep the food separated and do a really big broadcast of the general food and it's worked out really well with these fish. And I'm just happy to see the tank is looking so beautiful. It's approaching that one year mark soon for the tank being filled up with salt water. So I will definitely get a video out for that as well. One final thing on the 720 gallon tank I want to say is that it is hair algae free and been looking great. One thing I could see that has come out of this though is while I don't have hair algae anymore, unfortunately it has caused some other issues in the tank where nutrients have been overly depleted and unfortunately the corals in the 480 gallon tank have kind of suffered because of that. Let's talk about the 480 gallon reef now. Let's start off as I said I got rid of all my hair algae but I also created zero nitrates, zero phosphates in the system for an extended period of time. While I wasn't really getting readings and testing them before it was pretty apparent that after the hair algae died and I had added a triple DI saver to my RO unit and I was getting actual zero TDS water, the algae quickly cleared out. But unfortunately while that algae did clear out, I started to see some pretty detrimental things go on with my corals. Now my large bubble coral has not been looking good and it's been moved off to the side. It's still not looking good and honestly long term I don't know if it's going to make it. My other neon green bubble I had suddenly took a turn and within a week it had died. A couple of acros had burned tips and I think it was just that alkalinity was a little bit too high and there wasn't enough nutrients in the water to support it and they just got burned. And I haven't lost any more acros other than a couple initially when this started and some burned tips. 
And to combat this, I just decided to go through the pre-filters and the RO membranes. That produces water with about 5 to 8 TDS for my water supply. I actually dosed about 5 to 15 gallons of that a week for a couple of weeks. And I noticed everything started really rebounding. Another thing that was kind of a clue things weren't going good is the coralline algae stopped growing. And since I've done this, I've been seeing a lot more in the way of coralline algae growth popping up in the tank. And since I had my alkalinity too high, I also had to start doing a lot of adjustments with my calcium reactor. But as of right now, everything's looking good. I did add a few corals to the tank, although they're in the back. I have a few paleothoa that I added that my wife picked out. They look really nice. And my friends are cherry corals had this beautiful ultra blue squamosa clam. Just a little baby guy, I picked it up and got it into the tank. It's sitting in a Tupperware tray right now. And you might ask, why do I have it in that Tupperware tray? And simply, it's because it's such a small clam and some of these rasses that I have in here, I don't want them to think that this might be something that could become a meal. So I've decided, just for the benefit of the clam, to keep it in that tray for a few months until it puts on a little bit of size. I'm hoping it'll happen pretty quick. The Duresa clams that I've only had in here a few months have put on almost a half inch of shell, and they have really gotten some size on them since I've purchased them, and they're doing great. Now, I do have one other clam in here. It was a Fiji Maxima clam. And unfortunately, it's been kind of slowly going downhill. Um, sometimes the, these clams that come in that are a little bit more size, uh, I've heard of like sudden clam death syndrome, or sometimes these clams just don't do well long term. It's just a kind of hit or miss thing. This one's really been hanging on, which has kind of surprised me, but we'll see what happens. Fortunately, even if it dies, I'll try not to put it to waste and I'll probably feed it to the puffers. But in either case, the rest of the corals and the other clams in the tank have all been doing great. The sea anemone is enormous now. I can't believe this thing has not split. It has got to be close to a foot in diameter now. I'm still feeding it. The clowns are still inhabiting it and it's doing really good. As far as fish go in the 480 gallon tank, they have been doing excellent. The last fish that were put in, of course, were the tangs. There's been no casualties in here, and all the fish have been getting along for the most part. The tangs, of course, have little spats of aggression here and there, but that's to be expected. And since I've added those fish and these last couple of corals, I really haven't been doing a whole lot in the tank this summer. With this alkalinity nutrient issue hit, I decided to kind of put everything on pause. Now, my nitrates and phosphates, I'm happy to report, are elevating again. The nitrates are between 5 and 10 parts per million, and the phosphates are running between 0 and 0.03, which is at least a reading before I was getting nothing. And that to me is a really good sign to see at least something on the test kits before they were both completely clear with no color, and I was kind of going, well, there's not much else I could do. Now, when the nutrient levels dropped and I got rid of all the algae in the 720 gallon, the refuge tank also took a big hit. A lot of the algae in there also died back. It has been coming back though, and I think that's all a positive thing for this system. I'm really happy to see everything's doing good, and there are some coral shows that are going to be coming up soon. Aquachella is coming in August. I'm looking forward to going to that in the Chicago area. There's a lot of good shows coming up, and I'm going to get a little bit more time, hopefully as fall rolls around, to spend more time uh, making videos. The tank has not really been neglected other than just not scrubbing the glass every single day, but I've been doing it at least once a week and couldn't be happier. The equipment room's doing good. Uh, temperatures in the tank have elevated slightly with it being the middle of summer. Uh, we had a few really hot days here where it was a heat index of about 100, 104 outside. So it was in the 90s with extremely high humidity and the tank handled it pretty well. I did open my fish room door a few times as this space does trap heat a little bit more and it does have a slight negative pressure so it draws air in. 
but at the same time it's also heating that air with all the lights going. So I will open the door periodically. The humidity levels have been staying good though in the 40-50% range most of the time. I'll hit the 60s at night, that's okay. And the rest of the house has been maintaining a great humidity level in the 40s. So there's not been any issues with that. The skimmer's been working good. Everything else has been working good. I'm happy to say the tank's just been great. Even the Mantis shrimp in the 150 gallon refuge tank has been doing really good. And I'm looking forward to watching everything grow. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep taking care of everything and doing some research on bioluminescence as I get a chance. I'm hoping to write another article on it in the near future. I can't promise anything though, but I have some really interesting stuff to share with it, and I'm looking forward to, to getting that together and sharing it with the community out there. I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. If you did, of course, go ahead, give me that thumbs up. Let me know that you like the content. And I really want to hear everybody's comments down below, what you think of the tank and how it's doing, and any other comments or questions that you might have about the 1600 gallon system, please go ahead, feel free to leave them down below. Of course, if you want to see more on the journey of the 1600 gallon system and its progression, go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget the bell notification. Thanks again for watching everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.